cloudy day all day. Um, it's been snowing most of the day. There isn't a ton of accumulation. It's been very light snow, but it's been cloudy all day. We just hooked up this PV panel here to the charge controller and to the batteries. And so I installed this charge controller and batteries yesterday. We tested it out with a pump and it works well. So I just hooked up the PV panel to it. The batteries were at 12.9 volts. And you can see the PV there, it says PV. It's putting out 13.3 volts, which isn't much, but it's putting out some. Uh, the battery's at 13.2 volts, which is awesome. It was at 12.9 when I came out. And so the batteries have gone from 12.9 to 13.2 with the PV panel putting out 13.3 volts. So that's great, that's good news. It's still charging even though it's cloudy. Um, of course, it'll take a long time to charge the batteries at that rate because um, there's just not that much gradient, but it is charging them even on a cloudy day. That's cool. Okay, good. So we can turn on our... Okay, so let me first do this. Um, so the PV panel just... I connected it with those regular solar connectors. I bought that cable off Amazon as well. It's 10 feet long. It's 10 gauge. Um, connected it to this 12 gauge variable cable. It goes into conduit up there and and it comes down right here down to the switch. The switch is just a switch loop for the pump so uh, the pump won't be energized um, all the time and then that switch loop goes down along with the PV power cable and that runs in here up this right here and so this is the wire from the PV. This is the 12 gauge variable cable. Not that it matters in here, but um, so it is doing its job. Okay, so if you haven't seen these before, this is a PV panel here, that's PV input. So the solar panel puts electricity in right here. This is the battery uh, connection right here. So these come out and go to the battery. Positive, positive, negative, negative is really easy. I actually put two batteries in series, or in parallel rather, so that the positive is connected to the positive, the negative is connected to the negative. So um, that's charging the battery. And then the current can go both ways, of course. If there's a demand put on by the load right here, where the low light bulb is, um, of course, current will flow to the load. And so here's the load wires coming out here. Now these go over here to the pump. They go down through here, down through this little box to this pump. And this pump is awesome. I'll turn it on in a minute. It's really quiet compared to some of these pumps I've used in the past in RVs and things. So the hot wire comes in here, the red wire, the load wire from the charge controller. I've connected it to the black wire here on this 12 gauge switch loop. And this goes up here, down that, of course, up to the switch, to one side of the switch. On the other side of the switch, the white wire comes out and comes back down here, of course. And um, the white wire is connected to uh, the red wire that goes to the pump, okay? So the switch basically just allows me to shut off the current to the pump, even though it's putting out current here. Now, is that a big deal to have the pump energized all the time? As long as there's doesn't a leak doesn't occur, otherwise the pump will kick on, it'll drain the batteries, it'll pump water everywhere, and, um, now, if a leak occurs, passive flow is probably still going to happen to some degree, but maybe it won't be as bad, right? So, so that's all that does. And, of course, the black wire coming off the pump goes back to the uh, negative side here on the load right there. Okay, so pretty straightforward wiring. Um, the pump, I don't have much room down here, so I sort of I had mounted it straight and I ended up mounting it at an angle uh, just because of where my... Um, hoses are coming in and out of. Um, I had to redirect my plumbing. You'll recognize this if you watch my other videos here, the greenhouse for the plumbing um, of this piece coming in here. And I had to kind of angle it down. This is just a hose adapter filter. So I used a three quarter inch. I didn't have a one inch um, hose thread, garden hose thread, PVC adapter, but this is a three quarter inch garden hose thread PVC adapter. So I just screwed it on here, screwed it on here. And of course this is all low pressure. Um, and this is the filter, of course it's full of water. And if it starts to collect sediment or whatever, we can shut the valve off there, um, open that and drain it, and then um, put it back on. This kit actually came with some seals. So pretty cool stuff. 
Um, I should put the links in the description of all these little parts I bought because this was not, I was surprised how not expensive, I thought this would be a whole lot more expensive than it was. Um, let's talk about the pump for just a minute. So the water comes in here and goes to the pump, of course, and pump is only flows one direction. Of course, it has a little arrow on it somewhere there. I can't really see in the dark. But this pump is amazingly quiet in RVs that I've had before. Um, three or four RVs we've had in the past, they're super noisy, and this pump is amazingly quiet. And there's the part number. It says model number 4008-101-E65, I think. Is that what it says, 65? And this Sureflow pump was, I think, 65 bucks. So, and this has just made my wife so happy. She was so happy watering last night because there's so much water flow coming through. And she can water the whole thing in like five minutes instead of 30 minutes or maybe 10 minutes instead of 30 minutes. It was taking her a long time to water everything just because the gravity flow just was, it was there and it's reliable, but it's very slow. So this has made a big difference. My buddy was kind enough to give, he had some batteries sitting around. And so these Duracells, um, these are AGM batteries. I can't really see the number on there. It's an ultra 12 volt, 35 amp hour. They're AGM batteries. So that's pretty awesome. Um, absorb glass mat so they'll withstand um deeper cycles hopefully we won't be depleting it very much we'll just be running this pump on it maybe a light here and there all right so what else on this um let's turn it on and see how it sounds i want to make another comment on if you're plumbing a greenhouse or plumbing anything there's a reason that you know commercial builders and professional builders and even non-professional builders put the drain and the water inlet and outlet at a certain height off the ground and on a certain spot where the sink's going to go. So I thought, well, I don't need to bring it all the way around and bring it here because this is where we're going to put the sink. I thought, I'll just bring it right here and it'll be fine. Well, it's at the wrong height. Um, you can see how close it is to the sink and I had to trim it so that we can actually open and close it. And then it's so close to my cabinet because of this irregular wall I couldn't get the cabinet any further that direction, so I had to trim the edge of the valve uh, handle right there as well. It still opens and closes, it's fine, but um, and I'm not planning on using it very much, but when we do have to use it, it's uh, <laughs> it's right real close to the sink. And there's, of course, the bottom of the sink right there. So um, I've got some more plumbing to do, obviously, but the plan is to have this output of the pump obviously go to a water hose so my wife can water, and then it'll have a split right here a Y, and I think I'm just going to use something like this. Um, hopefully I can get away with that. And um, I'll just put a Y right there and have the other Y come up and go to the faucet right here. Okay, good. So, um, so just keep these things in mind. You know, I'm, I've worked construction and I know how this stuff works, but I, I just did my own thinking. I was like, ah, it'll be fine. I'll, I'll make it work. I'll run plumbing around or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And it's kind of a pain in the butt to, um, to have to make so many modifications because of poor planning. Okay, so just all I'm saying is plan this stuff out uh, better than I did. All right, let's see how this pump runs. Okay, so if we're gonna run the pump, what I'll do is, we'll just turn on the switch here. I need to put my switch plate on, don't I? Down here, there's an enter button. And so there's no energy, even though I have the switch on, there's no energy coming out of here that's going to the pump until you hit this. Uh, it's not focusing very well, is it? Okay. And now you can see the solar panels putting power to the battery. The battery's putting power now to the load, which is the pump. And you heard it run there, kind of cycle on. So it's all energized now. And so here's the wand. Okay, so watering just goes super, super fast. Now, of course, we wouldn't be doing much watering had I built this planter right, but we've talked about that in another video, right? Okay, I'm gonna come over here by the pump and then I'm gonna run it just so you can hear. Okay, here it goes. I mean, that's... 
it, it's not loud at all. You can carry on a conversation easily. My wife and I were out here talking uh, in the dark while she, or not in the dark, but in the evening while she was watering. And with the cabin doors closed, it's even quieter. So. Okay, I'm not going to water much just because it's been cloudy all day and everything's still wet from last night. So, when we're done, we'll just reach in here, hit the enter button again, and that turns off the power to the load. Now, that may be all we need. I may have not needed a switch up here. That load switch probably would have been fine. So, maybe I'll use the switch loop for something else. I don't know uh, if I stop using it for that. Okay, good. So, that's the pump. Okay, and just for comparison... Um, Let's do this first. Let's hook up the passive water flow so the hose comes down, goes up around. And, of course, this is all from uh, gravity. Let's put it on the same setting we had the other. Okay, this is what we'll be using. The shower. So the shower mode. Okay, that's the passive flow. It's not even spraying out. So we have to switch it over to this center mode, and then we can actually get some flow out the middle. Okay? So it's not much, but it's some, and it works, but it takes a long time to water, as you can see, when you have this whole area all the way down there, all the way up here, plus all the pots. So it takes a while. Um, the lavatory setting directly on gravel. I had to level the gravel, kind of compact it, and then put my boards, I put some two by fours, I made a frame around the base, so it has a nice wide base. I also screwed the cabinet to the um, tires in the back here and also on the side, so it's fairly stable, and um, it should stay there for us. Uh, next is getting all the plumbing done, of course. Getting the faucet in, getting the drain in, and then we should be able to have some running water out here to wash hands or to wash tools off or whatever. Okay, I've done a little bit of work, and uh, I didn't make videos of me doing the work, but I, I think I can cover this pretty quickly um, without you seeing me glue a bunch of pieces together. So basically, we're going to have power coming in from this PV panel um, around here. It's a mess right now because I haven't trimmed my wires. My plan is to go ahead and move this PV panel to the outside and then just run it through a hole right up here. And then we'll have wires coming in, going to the conduit right there, into 12 gauge, 12-2 uh, variable cable. And so it's the gray stuff. It comes around here and comes down. Okay, so there it is. Sorry. So it just comes along the top there and then comes down the back side of this. I tried to kind of hide it. And um, there's a switch loop that'll be for the pump. <clears throat> um, and then it goes down here into the ground. And then it goes underground. I have three cables, so I ran... One for the solar power to go from the panel to the batteries, or to the charge controller, and then the batteries, of course. So that'll charge the batteries. A second wire I ran from up there, down here, and it's just dead-ended on both ends because I'm going to save that for later um, in case I want to wire something else up there. And I, then I can run it from down here, up there, or have another panel up there. I can go ahead and run it. I can go ahead and connect it to the 12-gauge wire. Uh, the third wire that's in here from here down is just a switch loop. That'll go to the pump, okay? So all that's buried under two or three inches of gravel. I started just direct bury the cable, which you can do, uh, but this gravel is going to be shifting around a little bit, and I thought I'd protect it with this conduit, so I did. So this is all three-quarter inch um, electrical conduit. This is just a three-quarter inch. Uh, has three-quarter inch glue ends here and here for the electrical box. Of course, I need to get my switch plate. So let's go over here to this side, and I did the same thing, uh, basically. So... I put a solar panel out here, and then that solar panel that's outside, I'll show you that in just a minute, that wire comes in on the side right there. Um, I'll talk about that in a minute, how I wished I'd wired it differently now, or ran the wire differently. But the red wire goes to that one side of that, one side of the red wire goes to that snap switch, which opens at 80, or closes at 85, and then opens again at 65. So, um, and then the other side of the red wire comes out, it goes to 12 gauge, 12-2 variable cable. Of course, I'm just using the red and the black. Don't need the ground. And uh, it comes down here, uh, down this conduit here, down to a switch. 
And this switch um, will turn on. And as long as that snap switch is closed, at, uh, it's 85 degrees or above up there. If you turn the switch on, the fan over here will come on. So this comes down, of course. Um, it goes underground. I have that elbow right there. Uh, the 90 degree elbow comes around another 90 degree elbow there. It comes over here. I just put a little um, junction box down here. And actually, that's the top of the junction box right there. So you can see it there. And this junction box is a three-way junction box. So it has a hole there, a hole there, and a hole right here. And of course, two wires come in this hole. One wire goes straight through, and I just buried it. And that's an open wire um, that's dead end right here. And it's also dead ended up there. I would say dead end because there's nothing connected to it. It's just clipped. And so <clears throat> that's just an extra wire that I've have run from up there down through the conduit. That'll give me another wire on this west side of the greenhouse in case I want to run another PV panel or maybe I don't even, you know, my wife talks about um, uh, getting a windmill uh, generator for this. So if the sun isn't out, it'll still charge batteries in here. I don't know if our electrical demands are ever going to be that high in here. I kind of doubt they are. In any event, um, of course, we didn't think we'd be doing any of this. So that's why I ran the extra cables, just to make sure, just just in case. So this will come up right here. My plan is to go ahead and build the box around here. Um, that'll give us a door that we can open and close uh, to seal off the cold air. And if if we want to open it, we can open it. And it'll passively ventilate, of course, through the fan. And then if we want to actively ventilate, um, we'll just flip the switch on, uh, the switch right here. And then if that switch is closed, of course, if it's on, right, closed, then the snap switch, when it kicks on at 85, this fan will kick on here and start pulling cold air through, okay? So it's only in the 50s in the greenhouse right now. It's not um, warm by any means, but it's not cold. And uh, so once we get this door on, this will be all closed up. Um, it's going to get colder. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and fill this, uh, put a plug in this just to help block the cold air from coming in. Not a lot's coming in, but some cold air is coming in. Um, yep, some air's, cold air is coming in. And so we'll just block that for tonight just to make sure it stays warm enough that we're not bringing in cold air at least. Okay, good. So that's the electrical connections. Um, this is all 12-gauge variable cable. So it should be heavy enough to run these uh, smaller things that I'm running, this 80-watt fan. Um, and it is because I've tested it. So it, it does work and it uh, runs it fine. Nothing's getting hot. It's not making any bad noises. So that's good. And what else? Let's go outside and look at the solar panel. Okay. So we have that solar panel on the inside of the windows. Inside of the window, we have this solar panel on the uh, outside of the building, of course. These little Z brackets turned out to be impressively strong. Um... So I'm pretty happy with those. And I actually used the self-drilling screws that came with the kit because they were adequate size and substantial. What I did do is I used some mobile home tape. That's that gray stuff right there. It's um, butyl rubber. And so I pre-drilled the holes um, and then I put a piece of that on there an inch by an inch and I doubled it over so it was an inch by an inch doubled and then put it underneath the Z bracket and then put the screws through that so it'll seal that around there from any moisture getting in there. What I don't like about this installation is I ran the wires around here and put them in the side right here and now I'd wished I'd drilled the hole directly through the back and just went ahead and sealed it. Um, I was worried about it getting more chance of water encroachment coming in here because this is at an angle and moisture is going to go behind that and moisture is really not going to get there. So I thought that would be better, but it looks really tacky. So that's going to have to get changed. And um, so I am going to go ahead and drill a hole behind this panel and go ahead and put it through and then just seal it really well with silicone and butyl rubber and that kind of thing. That way this unsightly wires out of sight. But I did use this. Um, this is not electrical tape. This is Gorilla tape. It's two inch wide. They're, they're duct tape. If you, that's what you call it, but it's Gorilla tape. And I've had this outside on a plug over here where I connect two extension cords. It's been outside for over two years. And I had to take it apart the other day. And the, stick, the glue is all super sticky still. I had to like really work hard to get it off. 
In fact, I had to cut some of it off because it was so sticky. It, none of it had broken down from UV penetration. I mean, the, the color was a little bit, not as, didn't look quite as new, but none of it had broken down. None of it had rotted. None of it had fallen apart. It had been rained on and walked on and snowed on and shined on for t over two years. So this stuff is, I'm, I'm impressed with this Gorilla Tape stuff. It's working. It's good stuff. And um, so I just wrapped the wiring all in that, that Gorilla Tape, and then pulled it through. And um, so I thought, well, that'll be good for, I don't have to worry about um, UV breaking it down or, or uh, water ever getting in it. Okay, good. Okay, so here's how I finish this out. <clears throat> this is just two by six right here, pressure treated. Um, two by four that I think I ripped down to two by two or so. Um, so an inch and a half by a couple inches maybe. And so that's the inner part right there. The outer part's all two by six. And then you can see I, I misalign my holes so my holes don't match where they tie the boards together, but um, I can plug those later. Just put some great stuff around that I need to trim it out, of course, and then I'll do that before I paint, obviously. But um, the door, we just used some hammered... Actually, we made these. These are just plain silver hinges from Ace Hardware. And so what we did is I just distressed them by pounding on with a hammer. And it's kind of hard to see, but there's some dents. And so it looks kind of distressed and kind of old. And then we just painted it with a hammered paint, a bronze, or I don't know what it was, a hammered spray paint. Okay. I need to paint the screws too. Um, this is just a little handle from I don't know where. And so what we did was we, um, well, there's a ladybug. What are you doing? So this little piece of one half inch insulation right here, I put in just to help block off the cold air, because even with even with this closed, the cold air um, coming around this edge was crazy. Um, especially if it was blowing from the north. When it blew from the north, it actually blew this door open. So I put this mobile home tape, this uh, butyl rubber tape, whatever it is, folded it over and made a seal all the way around. Um, for this little half inch piece of insulation here. Okay. And that sealed it up really well. Didn't have any leaks. What I did not do though was, you can see the opening back there, that's 40 feet away. That's two 20 foot culverts banded together. If you watch my other videos on that. Um, so it's 40 feet down there and I did not plug the other side. The problem with that is um, that cold air is still coming up this tube into my thermal mass and pulling heat off my thermal mass and my tire bales that are um, where's my finger, that are here all around this edge, all around these. I'm sorry, all around the culvert there, so, yeah. All right. So, right now it's February 6th, it's 84. This is at my head level. So up here, higher, it's got to be, uh, you know, 5 or 10 degrees warmer up there. So it should have activated the uh, snap switch, which is right up there. And we're just going to flip this on here. Yep. So that means that switch is closed up there. The snap switch is closed. That one right there, which is allowing current to flow. We open this, close the switch there, and then that allows us to power up. Oh, yeah. That is nice and cool. It's about 42 degrees outside right now. It's, it's warmed up nicely today. So, but it still feels nice and cool as it comes through there. Um, And so the goal, of course, is to pull in cool air from the bottom, which is denser, so it'll move more volume, pull that cool air in, and then when we do open these vents again, um, later in the spring when it starts getting too hot in here, we'll put those vents back in, those automatic vents. They'll open about 80, 80, 85 degrees. I can't remember what degree they open. And then, of course, they'll open. The snap switch will come on. We'll have that switch closed right there, so that switch will be on. So this fan will come on whenever the snap switch up there closes and then it'll help push the hot air out the top. That seemed to be a little more effective. It definitely seemed to be more effective than trying to pull hot air, hot thin air out the top and pulling cooler in from the bottom. So I think this is a better solution for cooling the greenhouse in the fall and the spring when it's gonna be the hottest. Okay, awesome. Okay, and just an update on the lavatory. Uh, the faucet's been in. Um, so we've just been leaving this power switch on right here, the enter button. We've just been leaving it on so it's always getting power. 
um, it's going right through from the solar panels to the batteries right to the load and so we're just leaving that on and we're using the switch loop right here so there the pump kicked on and charged the line and what it did was it charged both the let me open this up here you can see my why i ended up using there I had to special order that adapter to go from, um, no, I didn't special order. I actually got it at Ace Hardware. I just asked one of the Ace guys there, and they knew exactly what I was talking about. I needed to go from um, hose, garden hose adapter at the top of the gold part there, or the copper part, and then I needed another piece that went from that down to, uh, it was either 3 8 or half inch compression fitting, and I can't remember what that was, but that's just the typical fitting for that line. That goes up to, and of course I'm just using cold, I'm not using the hot, that goes up to the faucet. The cold, I'm sorry, the hot side that I didn't use, I just got a plug for it. So that's just plugged off there. Um, that way it won't leak. Okay, so the faucet was pretty straightforward. And now that it's energized, the faucet just, yep, does the job. And so then when we walk out, we'll just switch this off just in case something does start leaking. The pump won't just turn on, drain the batteries completely, and flood the place. Um, that way the pump isn't energized, or cannot be energized, if it does sense a drop in pressure and then tries to pump water. Okay, good.